Joining me now, one of the co-authors of this study, Nina Wang. She's a policy associate at the Center on Privacy and Technology at Georgetown Law. And, of course, Frank Fuguzzi, uh, MSNBC National Security Analyst and former Assistant Director for Counterintelligence at the FBI. I can't think of a better panel to have this discussion with. Um, Nancy, I want to kick it off with you. ICE has evolved really into a domestic surveillance agency. I mean, they're, as we said, they're skirting privacy laws, uh, amassing this trove of information on hundreds of thousands of Americans and immigrants. What exactly are they doing with this data? Yeah, so um, our two-year investigation on ICE surveillance has essentially found that ICE is effectively operating as a domestic surveillance agency. If you've ever had your picture taken at the DMV, you may be among the one in three people in America whose photo was searched by ICE using face recognition technology. If you've ever driven your car past a toll booth or in a pub public parking lot, uh, you may be among the three in four people in America whose license plate ICE has captured using high-speed cameras, along with the time, date, and location of where your vehicle has been seen. If you have a monthly utility bill, including from major providers like Verizon and AT&T, you may have been among the three in four people in America whose address ended up in the hands of ICE every single time you paid your bill. And as you've mentioned, ICE can do all of this without needing a warrant. And because these um, surveillance capacities are so secretive and create massive side doors around existing privacy protections, it's actually extremely opaque to understand what exactly they do with this information. Our research has found that they have access to this huge amounts of information, but what they actually do with it, how they use it in investigations, all of that is still extremely secretive. Is extremely sensitive, like you said, but also extremely frightening. Frank, uh, ICE has spent $2.8 billion. That was between 2008 and 2021 on surveillance data. Um, anyone's information can end up in their hands. Uh, based on uh, Nina's report, I'm curious, how is any of this legal? Uh, it's questionable, uh, and we need inquiries now. We need congressional oversight now. And that response you just read from Immigration and Customs Enforcement is clearly inadequate to certainly uh, assuage any of our concerns. Look, this is an eye-opening report, Tiffany. Uh, who knew, right? I mean, if you had to ask the average American, which government agency do you think had the greatest capacity to overreach and abuse its powers and authority, you might have heard answers like the NSA. Uh, the CIA, the FBI. Well, it turns out it's none of those. It's immigration and customs enforcement. And most people might think uh, confusingly so, well, maybe that's a jurisdiction around the border. I don't really live near the border. It's not an issue for me. No, no, that's, that's, that's border patrol. We're talking about ICE. This is a national remit with a national pro pro program that seems to have turned into domestic surveillance of all of us, and we need answers. You know, most Americans have become keenly aware over the years of the, the, the commercial sale of our data, right? You know, you look up new sneakers on, on, on Google, and you suddenly get ads on Facebook for new sneakers, right, and yeah. people scratch their heads and go, boy, that's, that's, that's kind of strange. No, this is way beyond that, Tiffany. This is your U.S. government buying data on on you from DMVs at the state level, utility companies at the local level. They're searching through facial recognition of your driver's license photos. They know where you drive because of toll booth data that they're either buying um, or, or acquiring outright in, 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 a, in a gift from those jurisdictions. And when states say, oh, we're trying to plant the flag, we're trying to stop you from doing this, don't do this anymore, you know what they do? This report says they, they, they do an end around that, that law in that state and they go buy the data somewhere else. So this is, this is a revelation to me after 25 years in law enforcement. We need answers. It, it smells a lot like the abuses we uncovered after the Patriot Act. Yeah. You'll remember concerns with the FBI storing metadata of your phone records. Well, all that was Absolutely. was just the numbers dialed, incoming numbers dialed, outgoing numbers, and uh, anonymity. They'd get a search warrant later if they needed to figure it out. None of that's happening here. It's far yeah. worse. Yeah, and you know, this, like you said, the Patriot Act, this all came about after 9-11, where people were frightened and were all too willing to give up their civil liberties. I have to say, it's not um, so surprising. I also remember things like COINTELPRO, uh, and in more recent times, uh, you know, agencies uh, tracking Black Lives Matter activists, so it, it's sad. But, Nina, one thing that you pointed out that Frank talked about is this data sharing, and Equifax was one of the, um, the, the people who was buying and, and selling uh, data, um, which is quite frightening. Tell us about their role in this. 
Yeah, so Equifax has played a central role in how ICE has been able to buy up people's utility records. Um, so Equifax has basically organized a um, group of utility companies and asked these companies to send in their um, customer data for mostly credit reporting purposes. However, Equifax has turned around and sold that trove of data to a, another company uh, called Thomson Reuters, which sells these person search databases to ICE. So through this long chain of various different entities, ICE has been able to buy the utility records of multiple individual utility companies, actually without most of them knowing and certainly without the knowledge of the actual consumers. Which is so frightening. Um, you know, Frank, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the reason why this is happening. This is ICE, you know, their intention was to go after um, uh, undocumented immigrants, I, I believe. But you think about the Ukrainians, right? And imagine it was acceptable to do this when people were coming from Central America. Imagine targeting uh, Ukrainians coming over here, uh, you know, and ICE using this data for them. I feel like America would have more sympathy and empathy there. So it's, you know, it's very unfortunate. Uh, we have about 10 seconds left. What should lawmakers be doing? to stop this, uh, this, this kind of privacy invasion. At a congressional level, we need oversight hearings right now in the Senate and yeah. the House. At the state level, legislators need to ask a very simple question of the federal government. Are you acquiring data from our various companies and DMVs and all of that? Are you doing it? How are you doing it? Stop it now. And, and those are the questions that need to be asked, because this is actually undermining our safety. Undocumented people aren't going to apply for driver's licenses. They aren't going to right. take a road test, a driver's test. They're going to be less safe. We won't be able to track them if we get in an accident with them. They're not going to apply for utilities. They're not going to have heat and electricity. This needs to get fixed quickly.